another technique that I use when it comes to alcohol markers with doing my art and my coloring is building up my shadows. Here you can see a picture of a finished coloring page without and with shading. But I'm going to do the same thing here so that you can see how it can make a difference in a page. Sometimes I'll color pages with just shading and it actually looks quite striking. You can do it in different colors if you wanted to have all blue shading or all red shading. So let's do some examples of that here. So here I'm going to do, uh, this is already quite gray so I probably don't need that. So I like to build up my shading. So I go around the edges and I, I decide where the light is going to be. So let's just say the light's coming from this way. And we're going to add our shadows underneath. Um, so we might have some shadows under the eye, might have some shadows there, might have a little bit there. And then I would build up my color. So shadow doesn't usually have like one shade. There's usually a buildup um, to the darkest. So like if you were in a dark room with the door open, the corner of the room would likely be darker. Uh, like the furthest corner of the room would be darker than it is right at the door. So that's what we're talking about here is the different qualities of shading based on how close it is to the actual object. So see how that kind of makes it come to life? And so let's do that on a blank one so you can see what that looks like. So I'm going to do the same, um, but I'm just going to build up that color or build up that shading. You might even have some under here. So you can make a piece of art come to life with just shading or, a, you know, a coloring. You can also, um, or a coloring page, sorry. You can also make something come to life um, and give it shape with shadow. So I'm just going to add a little bit there. So you sort of decide where the shadow is going to be and then just start building in your shadows. Might have a little bit there too. And you could blend this out if you wanted to. I don't, I don't usually blend. I like the look of no blend. But if you do a wet on wet, it will bleed into itself and that, that will look nice as well. And then you could even go with a, an even darker color. Right on the darkest area like that. Sometimes if you go too dark, it makes the line look thick. So that's how you can use shading to make something come to life. I could even do it on this little thing here so you can see how it'll make it look more round. Or you could use it to make things look, uh, oops, you can make it make things look quite a bit more around like this. Give it a little bit of depth like that. Yeah, so that is one, that is another technique that you can use to build up your shadows. So let's do it with blues. So we'll do this one with a blue. Uh, let's see. Oh, he's, he's backwards. That's why I'm like, what? <laughs> All right. So this is a, a light blue. I could have probably even started with a lighter blue. But you can make it almost look like there's just a blue light in the room if you wanted to. This. And then you can even go in with a darker blue. Like that. I've colored entire pages like this before. Sometimes it just makes it look really dramatic. You could do the same thing with reds. Okay, so let's try the same thing with, with a combination of pinks and reds.
We're getting to know where all the shadows are, so it's faster now. So we're just identifying where the shadows would be. So this would be um, a good way to illustrate that there's like a red light in the room or, um, you know, if you wanted to give, give it, uh, you know, a scary look or a haunted look. Here. See how that uh, you can do different things with the, the shading. So that is how we do different types of shading with alcohol markers.